In this video, we're going to look at how we can convert between the various units of concentration. And so we're going to look at lecture problem four, which has a couple of different a few different examples. Um, we're going to have problems one, two, and three. And I actually separated each one of these out onto its own slide. So over the next few slides, um, we're going to be looking at these problems in turn. And that's just so that we have plenty of room to do work through the math. Now, one thing I want to point out, and this is really, really important. It's at the bottom of the slide that you have, uh, and it's down here, and it says, you know, when we go through these, we're going to be looking at going in one direction. So, for example, like molarity to, uh, molarity to molality and from uh, molality to mole fraction, for example. However, um, you need to be able to go in the reverse direction. So 12.9 and 12.11 are really important problems, and you're going to want to make sure that you can do those at home. They are the reverse of 1 and 2. So if you can do 1 and 2 here, and you can do 12.9 and 12.11, which is going in the backward direction you understand what's going on with these unit conversions. Okay, so let's look at the first one. And so this one is going from um, molality uh, to mole fraction. So that's what we're doing in this one. And so you need to be able to go in both directions. So this is gonna go in this direction and then either 12.9 or 12.11 is gonna go in the reverse. So now here's how I like to set this up. I like to set this up as follows. I like to put what, what information I have at the top. So we're going to mole fraction. That's what we want to know. And we're coming from molality. And so what we have is a 0 0.120 molal. And remember, this is 0 0.120 moles for every one kilogram. And we have to write what it is. So this is 0 0.120 moles of methanol for every one kilogram of ethanol, which is the solvent, right? So a molality, in, in molality, um, we have um, units of moles per kilogram of solvent. So moles of methanol, which is the solute, dissolved in ethanol, which is the solvent. So that tells us exactly what we have over here. And for mole fraction, what we need when we get mole fraction, uh, if we want to get the mole fraction of methanol, for example, uh, it wants the, the mole fraction for both, but we'll start with the mole fraction for methanol. Um, we need the moles of methanol divided by the moles of methanol plus the moles of ethanol. So we need both of those. Okay, so that's what we need. That's what we're doing. We're going from one to the other. We, we know what we need for over here. So we're gonna start working on different things. So there's a couple of things that we can start working on right away. Um, so let's just make our lives easier. And because we have the bottom here being one kilogram of ethanol, let's just assume that we have one kilogram of ethanol. And that's going to make things convenient. You actually don't even have to make that explicit assumption. Um, if you do it the way that I, I do it here, where I say on the bottom that it's one kilogram of ethanol, but um, we can make the explicit assumption just to, to kind of get us started. So if that's the case, then if we have one uh, kilogram of ethanol, we can fill out our moles of methanol directly uh, in this equation. Um, and we get that from the moles of methanol that are already present. So we know that we we have 0 0.120 moles of the methanol and we have 0 0.120 moles of the methanol down below. So now what we need to get is we need to get moles of ethanol. And so to do that, we can take our one kilogram of ethanol and we can use the molecular weight to get us there. So if we convert a kilogram to gram, so we say for every one kilogram, we have 1000 grams and we take the molecular weight of the ethanol, which is for every 46.07 grams, there is one mole. And I just got that from the problem up here. We can calculate um, the number of moles, which is 21.71 moles of ethanol. And so I can fill that in to my equation for the mole fraction. And we can say, okay, we have 21.71 moles of the ethanol on the bottom. And so my mole fraction for methanol is going to equal the 0 0.120 divided by the 0 0.120 plus 21.71. So I get 0 0.00550 as my mole fraction for the methanol. And um, what we can do is we can solve the, the mole fraction of ethanol 
by taking our 21.71 moles divided by 0 0.120 moles plus 21.71 moles. And for this, I get a mole fraction equal to 0.995 as my mole fraction. Uh, another way of doing this would have just been to subtract from 1. You could have just taken 1 minus 0 0.055 uh, to get the mole fraction of the ethanol. But I'm just showing you uh, another way of doing it. Um, both would have given you the same answer. So you can see here that this is actually very straightforward. As long as you understand what you have in, on the one side and what you have on the other. In this second question, we're going to go from units of molality to units of molarity. And again, uh, you, need to go, you need to be able to go in both directions, so you should take a look at the example in the textbook to go in the reverse. It's basically just a reverse of this process. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my molality and my molarity on top. And we're going to take a look at what it gives us. So it says that we have 3.42 molal. So that means that I have 3.42 moles of urea per every one kilogram of solvent. And if I want to get a molarity, what I need for molarity is I need moles of urea, which is the solute, per volume of the solvent in liters. So I basically need to have liters of solution on the bottom. And so our job is going to be to figure out the moles of urea and the liters of solution. So to make my life easier, what again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that I have one kilogram of solvent. And that's going to make life a little bit easier. And the reason for that is because I can transpose the 3.42 moles of urea right over. And then our job is going to be to figure out how many liters of solution that is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write 3.42 moles on top. And now we got to figure out the liters of solution. So um, if you notice, one of the things that this problem gives us is the density. And that's going to be very important when we're dealing with uh, molarity to molality, um, conversions, and uh, things of the sort. So the, the density is going to help us because it's going to allow us to go between a mass and volume. And so, so we'll take a look at that in, in, just, in just a few seconds. Okay, so for the volume of the solution, we need to be able to convert the, we need to be able to convert what we have on the left side over to a volume on the right side. And so to do that, we need the density. And so the density allows us to convert between grams and mils. But the grams is very important. The grams in this case is going to be the total grams of solution. And so what we have to recognize is that that is going to be the mass of the water plus the mass of the urea. So in order to get the grams of in order to get the grams of the solution, we have to get the mass of the water and the urea. So let's start with the first part. So our mass of solution is going to equal the for the water, that's pretty easy. We have one kilogram of water, so that's going to be 1,000 grams. And to get the mass of urea, we have to take our 3.42 moles of urea and use the molecular weight. So the molecular weight is for every one mole, there is 60.05 grams of urea. And so what we get for the, the mass of this is 205.4 grams. And so we can now add our two components, the solute and the solvent together, to get a total mass of 1,205.4 grams of solution. And what we can do is we can convert this 1,205.4 grams. We can multiply by the, we can use the density of 1.045 grams for every one mil. And then there are 1,000 mils for every one liter. Now we can get a volume in liters for this entire solution. And so when you do that, you get 1.15 liters of solution. And then that can go into our calculation above. So our molarity is going to equal 3.42 moles divided by 1.15 liters, which is going to give us 2.97 molar for our concentration. And so again, the key thing here is to recognize what the density is giving us. The density is giving us a relationship between grams of the solution and milliliters. And so in this case, the solution is made up of two components, the water and the urea. So we have to take both the mass of the solution, which is the water, and the urea, which we get from the number of moles, 
And once we have that, we can convert that easily to liters and get a molarity. Okay, so the last problem asks us to uh, do a conversion where we convert the um, where we convert mol uh, mass percent. And we're going to convert this to molarity, molality, and mole fraction. Um, so we're going to we're going to have to do a few different things here, and we're going to have to take a look. So let's do one of the easier ones first. Um, so let's let's convert this to molality. Okay. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to write down what we need for each of those. So for my mass percent, I know that I have eighty-five percent. So that means that I um, that means that if I, for example, if I were to have one hundred grams of uh, this solution and I'm just going to arbitrarily pick 100 because that makes the most sense because then I what I know is I have 85 grams of H3PO4 per 100 grams total which is going to be the um, H3PO4 plus the water and I'm converting this to molality and so for molality what I need is I need moles of H3PO4 per uh, kilogram of solvent and so we got to work out both of those things. Now, um, for the mass percentage, I have my 85 grams of H3PO4, so let's figure out how many moles of H3PO4 that is. So what I do is I take my 85 grams of H3PO4, I divide by the molecular weight, which is, uh, if you add those up, you get a molecular weight of 97.97 grams for every one mole. And so I get a total number of moles of 0 0.868 moles. So on top, for my molality, I can put that I have 0 0.868 moles of the H3PO4. And then on the bottom, I need kilograms of the solvent. So I'm going to take a look down here at my 100 grams total. So if I have a, a total of 100 grams, and this is equal to the H3PO4 plus the H2O, what I can do is I can figure out how much H2O I have um, by subtraction. So if I take my 100 grams minus my 85 grams, this is going to give me 15 grams of H2O. And so on the bottom, I can convert that to kilograms. I get 0 0.015 kilograms. I basically divide the 15 grams by 1,000. Uh, I can then get my bottom part. And so what I get for my molality in this case is if you take 0.868 divided by 0.015, you get a molality of 57.8 molal. Okay, so in the second part of this, this um, in the second part of this question, we're going to look at how to convert mass percent to molarity. And so what we figured out was that we, for our mass percent, um, we figured out that we have 85 grams for every 100 grams total. And on the for molarity, we need moles per liter of solution. And so again, what we can do is, is we can convert our grams to moles, and we did that in the last case, and we figured out that if we have 100 grams, if we assume that we have 100 grams, um, that gives us 85 grams of the H3PO4, and we converted that to moles, and we got 0 0.868 moles. So I have that on top. Um, so now we have to come up with liters of solution. And in this case, it's actually quite convenient because we have that we have on the bottom here, we have 100 grams of solution. So we can use the density directly in this case. And we can say, well, if we have 100 grams of solution and our density is 1.69 grams for every one mil, we could figure out our liters by dividing that um, by 1,000 mils per liter. And for the bottom, we get a total of 0 0.0592 liters. And so if we calculate our molarity, our molarity is equal to 14.65 molar. Okay, so for mole fraction, uh, we have, remember, we have 85 grams per 100 grams total. Um, we, for mole fraction, we need the moles of H3PO4 divided by the moles of H3PO4 plus the moles of H2O. 
And so actually we can do this fairly we can do this fairly easily. So if we assume that we have 100 grams, we know what our moles of H3PO4 are from the last two examples. So we can fill those in. And so we get uh, 0 0.868 moles uh, and 0 0.868 moles. And now it's just a question of how many moles of water we have. Well, if we have 100 total grams and we subtract away the 85 grams of the H3PO4, this gives us 15 grams of H2O. And we can convert this into a uh, number of moles by dividing it by the molecular weight, which is 18.02 grams per every one mole. And so what you get from that is you get 0 0.832 um, moles of H2O. So we can add that into our mole fraction calculation. And we can calculate our mole fraction of 0 0.510 for um, the H3PO4. So that shows you how to do a wide range of conversions um, from mole fraction to uh, from mass percent to a variety of things, and then how to go from molarity, molarity to molality, and how to go from uh, molality to mole fraction. So it kind of gives you an idea. So just practice these. Um, the process is simple. You know, get used to using the density and remembering what the density is and how it will help you. And um, just keep in mind what you're given, where you're going, and how you can easily extract out the information from what you're given to where you're going.